negative either. Of course. It's, um, you know, kind of like a mixture of the good, the benevolent, and they show a future that is uh, pretty peaceful and uh, money problems have been taken care of. Um, we never hear about these, you know, bankers and all this type of stuff. Even though one of the alien races, the Ferengi, are um, pretty into their Latinum, <laughs> they call it. Right, right. Um, you know, they're definitely obsessed with that money system. Right. Um, but they seem to be the universal um, trade um, group. Right. Um, so, and, and it feels like a lot of people are potentially staring themselves blind then on, on the fact that uh, because in Star Trek they're talking about a united federation, uh, everyone thinks that uh, that's a, a, a programming that the UN is, is, is taking over and, and this is what the uh, future is going to look like. But but as we've, I guess, just elaborated on a little bit here, that, that's uh, uh, it's to brush away uh, the content of the show too too easily, so to speak. Uh, there's many levels and and uh, um, details throughout the series and also in the movies, of course, that uh, um, you know elaborate so much more upon upon these these problems than just uh, you know that this is a an, an evil propaganda scre- scheme, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the the logos for the United Federation of Planets and the UN are extremely similar. And you can tell one was designed from the other. Hmm. And do you know which one came first? (laughs) Well, yeah, the UN. The UN, hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess they, yeah, to put it in context again for how they do want to model things and if they want to model it according to um, you know a, a possible future or a possible you know reality that they do want to create they want to at the same time make it as close to reality as possible uh, and in many, many cases again that that could be uh, I don't know dangerous I guess or, or uh, it can be used you know in all these different ways to to sway or manip- manipulate people but uh, um, I mean, at the end of the day, do you think that that's a, that's a, that's a bad thing that they've done things like that, Kent? Um, not particularly, no. No, I think it's a good thing for people to look at all different sides of these issues to determine, you know, what they personally think about this. And that is one of the goals that Roddenberry set out to meet when he started all this, was to present a benevolent future that would um, basically be um, the choice of the people. You know, do you want this or not? Right. You can go for it. Hmm. You know, you can work towards it if you wish. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, on, a, on another note, um, found a, quite an interesting uh, correlation between uh, the the Star Trek world, as it were, and and uh, and our world. At least a few years ago, I don't know if you you're familiar with this one or not, Kent, but uh, the 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 name the Vulcans was actually a a nickname uh, that was used to refer to the let's say the Republican uh, presidential candidate uh, George W. Bush's his uh, foreign policy advisor team. Uh, this was a team or a group that was put together uh, prior to the 2000 uh, election, mm-hmm. and these were let's see, this, they said that the Vulcans were uh, led by Condoleezza Rice and included Richard Armitage. Robert Blackwell, Stephen Hadler, Richard Pearl, Dov Sakheim, Robert Solik, and Paul Woods, Wolfowitz. Uh, and uh, again, they were referred to 
or they refer to themselves as the, as, as the Vulcans. That's pretty. That's pretty scary, isn't it? <laughs> well, it kind of says that they're a little impressed with themselves. <laughs> right, right. You know that they believe themselves to be as smart as a Vulcan, so to speak. And yes, that most likely is directly related to Star Trek. Um, and I think it said in the official Wicked thread that the name, uh, it said there that the name the Vulcans alluded to a huge statue uh, of Vulcan, the Roman god of fire and metalworking, in Rice, uh, Condoleezza Rice's hometown of uh, Birmingham, Birmingham in, in Alabama. Uh, but again, that, that does not exclude anything that, that uh, this is connected to Star Trek, because again, obviously Vulcan symbolizes this aspect of, of uh, a previous, a previous, you know, warrior race, basically. But but through the fact that they used to manage to suppress, I guess, their emotions, they've gone away from a, from a warring, being a warring people, to very well, obviously emotionally cold or <laughs> non-existent people, but but still, uh, uh, you know, a, a peaceful people. And and I guess that, that also actually raises a, a kind of a a very interesting philosophical point with the fact that, you know, do we have to, you know, exclude our or remove our emotions in order to, you know, be a peaceful people? You know, there's many, many levels of philosophical kind of thought that, that comes into play when, when we think about these things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very true. In fact, um, Condoleezza Rice um, actually is a perfect uh, uh, example of a frigid ice princess. <laughs> right, right. Devoid of emotion and so forth. Right, right. She definitely comes across that way. Indeed. In the media, at least. You know, meeting her in person may be different. Exactly, but, yeah. You know, with how important these people's media image is to them, um, it would be hard for me to believe that it would be a mistake for her to be misrepresented in this way. Right, right. You know, it seems to be deliberate. Well, exactly, and and that's that's actually a good point if if we talk about some of these um, politicians that are managed, so to speak, in this way, in the media, that a lot of people, I guess, get the sense that they actually know some of these people because, again, they're they're sitting at home, they're watching the TV, and it's like it's like them dropping by for a visit in their own home, in a way, if you actually think about it. And through the image that they are projecting out through the media, through the TV, uh, I think people get a sense that, oh, I know that person, and especially if we if we think about you know George Bush or whatever uh, that many people that that refuse to see that that there is a an hidden agenda behind these these people because they they're having a hard time to pen- penetrate through that that uh, that person personality that is being projected this very conscious image that that they are projecting through the through the media you know what i'm saying yeah and I agree with you 100% that most people do get a feeling for the personal side of these um, people. And whether it's a TV show like Star Trek or a politician or um, some hero, you know, sports star, right. rock star, whatever they do feel also a sense of entitlement. Um, People get really pissed off when they go and approach a star, for instance. You know, my brush with fame (laughs) is what I'm talking about. Right, right. And you may run into Sean Penn somewhere in the mall shopping with his family. And you may ask Sean for his autograph, and he may say, I'm sorry, I'm not 
giving them now because this is my family time. Right. And I would be like, okay, that's cool. I can respect that. But another person would get upset, you know, that, geez, this big star couldn't give me 30 seconds of his time. Right. You know. It's it's a weird it's a weird relationship to to those people in a way very weird and actually this is the similar um, type of relationship that the fans of Star Trek have with the various characters <laughs> right in their favorite show um, you know personally my two favorite series or it was the next generation in Deep Space Nine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen the, the original series episode so many times, I'm kind of burned out on that <laughs> right, right. for the time being. Huh. Um, you know, and I have my favorite characters and ones that I enjoy seeing, like the bartender Quark, from Deep Space Nine, mm -hmm. um, a Ferengi who has uh, gotten himself into a lot of different experiences and troubles and problems over the years. And these, um, you know, you do get a sense of, you know, you're tuning in to one of your friends, a visit with one of your friends on a weekly basis. Mm you know, when the show is on. Right. And they definitely play up on that in the way that they provide the promotional materials, the extras on the DVD, season box sets, and so forth. Right, right. They definitely push that part of the equation. Exactly. Um... No, how about the how about the movies, the Star Trek movies? Any any thoughts on those? Any particular ones to you who that that really uh, stands out? I mean, there's been uh, I don't know how many there have been now, but I guess up to almost like eleven or something. What what do you what's your idea and and take on some of those, Kent? Well, there have been ten movies released so far, and they're in production with the eleventh. Right. At the moment, um, the ones that I enjoy the most are the um, Star Trek IV: The Voyage Home, where they have to rescue the two whales. Um, I also like um, the Search for Spock and the Wrath of Khan and the first. Star Trek movie, mm -hmm. um, which was uh, our reintroduction to the Kirk and Spock and McCoy uh, group of people. Um, it seems that the more movies they got into the series of these films, they got a little worse as they went along. Mm, you think so? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I would say the last couple of movies were pretty stinky. Well, I, I uh, yeah, sorry to interrupt, I just want to squeeze in there that I, I actually do like uh, the one called First Contact, but I guess maybe not so much because of a, of a you know, un, that it's an, an artistic film in, in the sense, but but the narrative, the, the storyline of uh, of the Borg, I think that's a, a very important and and a very good analogy to also a, f a future possibility, I guess. And and even if that's you know predictive programming or not, it, it again raises that important question of uh, when a race merge with a with a machine with a kind of a an, an artificial intelligence, if you will, that is uh, almost like a, a hive more than a civilization, and uh, the portrayal and the symbolic nature of, of how that is put out through the movie is, is to, to my eyes, very good and very uh, well done, you know? Yeah, that was 